Hi, it's Jordan Teen One, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this cute little lumigurumi bone. So it measures about two inches by an inch and a half here at the widest part. And I originally created this to go with my puppy dog, my puppy love dog. I'll show you what he looks like. So I have him holding his little bone. And you can find this on my channel. I'll add the link to the dog tutorial if you'd like to make him. So it's relatively easy to make. I think the trickiest part is just um, putting the two halves together because I do make it in two separate halves. And I also use double bands for the chain, which may be just slightly more difficult than using single bands. But I'll show you an example. This bone here I had done with using just single bands in the middle. And even though the shape basically turns out the same, I don't know if you can tell on camera as much, but the um, stiffness of it, it definitely is more wavy. It doesn't hold its nice solid shape where when you use the double bands in the middle, it definitely helps it to look just a lot neater. To make the bone, I'm going to be using a Rainbow Loom metal hook, but you can use a crochet hook or whatever you have available. You'll also need to have four either stitch markers or you can use any rubber bands to make a slip knot just to hold the ends in place as we're forming this. So I would recommend using a different color than what your main bone color is. And then as far as your band counts, you're going to need a total of 63 of your bone color, so I have white. To begin, we're going to make the foundation chain for the first half of the bone. So you can see I have them laid out in piles of two since we're doing two at once and I have the shape of a T. We're doing a chain of five and then from the center chain we're going to also chain down two. So I'm going to double the first set so just twist and back on both together there. And so that counts as our first one so here's two three, just take your time. I know it's a little bit harder when you're working with two bands at once. Four and five. And then you want to take your stitch marker or your additional band. I'm just going to make a relatively snug slip knot there to hold it together. And then from the third chain over this center. I'm going to push through all four loops and we're going to chain two. Again, you need to just somehow hold those together. So I'm going to use my stitch marker. So it's going to make like a Y shape. And then what you're going to do is repeat this to make the second half. So you can pause and do that now, and I'll see you back here in a minute. Once you have your two foundation chains made, then what we're going to do is take 34 bands plus an additional one that's going to tie it off, and we're going to link these together and then basically just trace around the whole bone. So it's one in each except for the four corners. They're going to get four. And then on the edges here, we're going to skip one. So I have mine laid opposite from where the chain started to where it ended, only because it sort of looks just the tiniest bit different if you look at it up closely. Let me show you on this one. This one is where we had first started a chain, and this one was where we had loose bands in a chain. And just looks slightly different. This one is more rounded. So I just like to have those on the opposite ends of the bone. So it's really a matter of preference. So I'm going to pick up my first piece and what I want to do is take my second piece and I want to sandwich these four end loops in between these four end loops. So I'm going to just go through the first two 
and get them off of my hook there. And then I'm going to grab the next four and go straight through these. Take out that clip. And then I'm going to grab the other two. So now if you look on my hook, I have this set in between this set. And then I'm going to take my first band. It's going to pull through. Now you may have to wiggle your hook around to get it to go through all four since they're going in opposite directions. And then one through the other. And then I'm going to go to the next one over. Make sure you're pushing straight through, getting through the middle of all four loops. Just doing a single crochet. And then the next one is going to be here where the two chains connected. And then we'll work our way up one arm here of the bone. So we have a single, and then the end here we're going to do four in the same. So here's one, two, make sure you're making it through all four, three, and four, and then we're coming back down the other side of that chain, and then in the center here, the one that has the most bands through, we're going to skip that one where the two chains had connected, we're going to work our way up the other arm, so we have just one single, and then in the end we're going to do four, So one, two, three, and four, and then coming back down, now again we're to the one where the two chains had connected. It is getting pretty full. And now we're to the straight part of the bone. So now we're at the part where the two sides connected. And honestly, I think this is the trickiest part because you have to make sure that your hook is going through all eight bands. And these outer loops I think tend to get a little bit twisted so you can see if you look from the top view we have the two sets that are on the outside of the sandwich and then the two sets that are on the inside of the sandwich so what you have to do is make sure you're going through the two loops from the outside and then the four loops from the middle and then also the two loops from the other side. That's important to make it look nice and symmetrical. And so you're going to go through all of these. Again, you're going to have to probably twist your hook around a little bit to make it through. And before you continue, you can just go ahead and look you should be able to see your bands on either side going in that vertical direction. You should be able to see that on both sides to make sure that you made it through all the right places. And then the rest of it's pretty easy. Doing one, and then where the chains met, we're doing another single, working up. And then four on the end. So one, two, three, 
three and four. And then coming back down the other side, we're going to be skipping the middle. Here's our last section, our last corner here with four. So hopefully it should be coming together here for you. That's three and four. And then coming down. Again, where the chain's connected. And then one more on the straight piece. So that will get you back to the start. And then we have to just tie it off here. And you can see it does look like a little bit of a gap. So we want to make sure that we're reaching over to this first stitch and going through that just to pull it nice and closed. Go under that first stitch, take your last band and do a nice and tight slip knot. Try and make this sticky up part be more towards the back so it's less noticeable. And then it's just a matter of running your hook along some of these back loops and taking that loop and hiding it. So you can just go through as many as you need to. And then you can go around and if you feel like it's curved in, you can just spread these apart, make sure that it lays nice and straight, get the rounded parts nice and round. Sometimes they want to bunch up. If you have the bands laying next to each other, it'll spread out that circle. And then your little bone is complete. I hope that everyone loves their new little bones. You can always leave me comments on YouTube and Facebook. You can post pictures of your creations to my Facebook page. I always love to see what everyone's doing. And please feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can stay up to date on my latest tutorials. You can also find me on Pinterest and Instagram. So please feel free to post your pictures there and subscribe to those as well. Thanks for watching.